Welcome. This is the online worship for Faith Lutheran in Staples and Bethany Lutheran in Cushing for August the 18th, 2024. My name is Pastor Chris Matheson, and it is good to be together. I want to give thanks for those who helped put this service together, for Monica for taping, for John for putting it together, for Sandy for her music. And with that, we'll begin our time of worship. We welcome each other to worship in the name of God, our Creator, our Redeemer, who walks with us and promises to be with us every step of our lives. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned, we have hurt our community, we have squandered your blessings, we have hoarded your bounty, in the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Amen.
God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Ever loving God, your son gives himself as living bread for the life of the world. Fill us with such a knowledge of his presence that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life to serve you continually. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Give us grace to receive your truth in faith and love and strength to follow on the path you set before us. Through Jesus Christ, amen. The Gospel according to John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, you will have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I'll raise them up on the last day, for my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven not like that which your ancestors ate and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. The word of the Lord. 
praise to you, O Christ. A reading from Ephesians, the fifth chapter. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. As you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, give thanks to God the Father at all times for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Grace and peace to you from God our Father, from Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. This week I was wondering, thinking about one of those essential things that we wonder as a Christian. What does the life of a Christian truly look like? This is a question we should be asking ourselves on a regular basis as followers of Jesus. Years ago, I read the autobiography of Albert Schweitzer. That name might ring a bell. He was a man who grew up the son of a Lutheran pastor. He was an incredible organist, a professor of theology. And then one day he decided to go to medical school. And he traveled to Gabon in Africa to become a missionary doctor. It's an exceptional story. We're often amazed at stories where people turn their lives around, where they make one choice, often a bad choice, grow up in diff difficult circumstances, and then by the grace of God, they change their lives. Stories of redemption, stories of second chances, stories of sinners being saved. Albert Schweitzer's story is a little different. He was already doing faithful things. Instead, he heard a call to a new way of service. He set aside what he had spent, most of what he had spent his life preparing for, and started anew. I started off today by reading this lesson from Ephesians. As I looked at it, I thought about the choices we make in our lives. Ephesians says, be careful then how you live. Not as unwise people, but as wise. Making the most of your time. And so we ask again, what does the life of a Christian look like? Is there only one right answer? Should we all be looking for a more holy life? A few thoughts. Martin Luther had a lot to say about the idea that some jobs were more important than others. In the Germany that he grew up in, in the 1500s, the church taught that religious work brought you closer to God. Priests, monks, and nuns were all set apart set above others. As a monk and a priest, Luther said, that's not right. Instead, Luther argued, God gives each of us gifts, and each of those gifts can bring glory to God. Each of us can be God's instruments in the world. And so the question, again, how are we taking these gifts that God gives us? Do we take that gift for finance and use it to support our church, to help God's mission in the world? Or do we use that gift of finance to build a retreat, to keep away from the world, to set up barriers so we don't have to interact with others? Do we have the gift of speaking, of talking? Do we use it to teach the gospel of Jesus Christ? 
Or do we use our gift for talking to share gossip? To share hurtful things? To share memorable stories? So what does the life of a Christian look like? I think part of it starts with self-control. We hear in Ephesians, do not get drunk. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. As followers of Christ, we seek to exercise self-control, to not live to excess. Instead, we remind ourselves that the greatest blessings we have come from good relationships with those around us. One way we interact with others is being in worship together. When we join and sing together, what a beautiful time it is to be surrounded by others united in song. Singing together, simple but holy. Singing is an important part of worship. Gathering together just to be. And so being together in worship draws us closer to God and I hope draws us closer to each other. We give thanks to be together and sing. Well, even as we gather together, we don't always agree on what our worship should look like, what we should sing, how we should worship, what it means to worship. And even in the midst of that disagreement, we seek to forgive each other and ourselves. That's another central part of being a faithful Christian is forgiving, letting go of grudges. When we live in community, there are times when we bump into each other, when there are disagreements. And as a community, we seek find, to find ways to forgive in holy ways, to hold others account, but also to forgive. So as today we gather together and think about what it means to live a Christian life, we give thanks for the gifts that we all have as the body of Christ. <coughs> we try to listen to hear God's call because sometimes God might be calling us to something new. It may not be a more holy calling. It might simply be something that needs to be done. And then there's also the real possibility that God will call us to stay right where we are. Instead, we look and see as things change around us. The call to serve might be right here, right now. And so we give thanks that the Christian life is a blessing even as it is often a challenge. We give thanks to God for fellowship, time together with those who love the Lord, the support of those around us. And all the while, we look forward to the life that is to come. Amen.
we continue with our faith. Let us speak of our faith. We believe in God whose love we know, in the beauty of his world, in daily bread, in the kindness of human hearts, and most clearly in Jesus of Nazareth. We believe that Jesus is the Christ whose touch of grace makes our eyes to see, our ears to hear, strengthens us to do all things in him, and delivers us from death to life. We believe in the Holy Spirit in whose power there is peace, in whose presence there is joy, and whose promise we dare to be more. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you now in our time of prayer. We give thanks that you listen to us. Dear God, calling on the spirit of wisdom to guide our hearts and minds, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Dear God, your wisdom has built the house that we live in. May the church be a house of wisdom for all who enter. May we continue to grow and stretch in ways we never thought possible. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear gracious God, may the harvest seasons be plentiful this year. We pray for those who prepare for the harvest, for orchards, vineyards, farms, and all of creation. Protect and conserve our earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear God, you have called laborers to work. Be with all who seek employment. Guide our leaders to support people. Help form a world with fair wages and safe places to work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear God, you call on us to invite guests into our midst. Make your presence known to all who feel lost, abandoned, or hurt. Direct your spirit of care to all who seek healing and comfort. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear God, may this congregation be a welcome table to all who seek the refuge of God. Break down walls and barriers that prevent us from offering a seat at the table. Help us as we seek to welcome new and old to worship you in all things. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for all those experiencing violence in all forms, in homes and in countries. We pray especially that warfare might end. We pray for those in Ukraine, in Sudan, in Haiti. Lord, wherever there is violence, we pray for a just peace to come. Lord, we ask your healing upon those who face all sorts of hardship, those who are physically ill, those who struggle with mental illness, those who lack housing. Lord, help us as we seek to care for those who cannot care for themselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear God, may we journey on your path, looking forward to a bright future while remembering where we have come. We give thanks for those who have gone before us and lead the way. We lift up these prayers to you, gracious God. Receive them in your holy keeping. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all and also with you. Let us share God's peace with one another. We give thanks for all that you give to us, God. And now we share some of what God has given to us through our offering. We return some of the first fruits of what God has shared with us.
you thanks for all that we have. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you, in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Now go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you for worshiping with me today, and God be with you till we meet again.